So, the retaining plate is this one. It only goes in one way up. And this is, needs a bit of lubricant between this and the outer helical. And you can see where it's going to come in contact. There's bright spots. That's where it's rubbed in the past. You don't need much here because there's not much in the way of force going on there. Right, so far, so good. Now there's four small screws. They are countersunk head screws and they hold the retaining plate in place. That didn't exactly run down very smoothly. I would imagine that's because of a little bit of surface corrosion on that screw perhaps. Although it looked clean enough to me. Yeah, those screw heads don't look wonderful. They must have been tight to get out. Here's the last of these screws. There it is. This one's always awkward at the top because if you slip, you drop it down that hole and you can guarantee that it'll stick on some grease down there and you'll never be able to shake it back out. You've got to pull things apart to find it. Alright, so we get those four screws tightened up. Check the action. It's nice and smooth still. Right, if I collapse the front, we've got four long black screws go through the remaining holes and they will hold the bellows to the back of the front standard Right, that's all done. Focus scale ring. Now we've got our alignment marks on the outer helical here and here. So I can see that where they're going to go. Let's get those lined up. You can usually see little marks where the screw heads bit into it previously too. Now I can just about see the shadow of one there. Depends how enthusiastic people were when they were doing the screws up previously. Just checking if I got that around the right place. There. Yeah, one of my alignment marks, I was looking at the wrong thing. That would never do. Generally speaking, in fact, about 95 times out of 100, if you put all the focus stuff back exactly where you found it, the focus is going to be correct. The only time it's not going to be correct is if the last bloke in there doing work didn't do the same or something seriously changed with, with a retina 1A or 2A or similar with the front on struts. If those struts get bent, that will shift your focus point. But this system is much more rigid and that's not likely to happen. But generally, if it was, you put everything back where it came from, it's going to be good. That's moving nicely, and I've got to add this leaf. This is the piece that couples to the inner helical. That little ho hole there in that bracket, that stops the shutter from rotating on the front of the camera. And this arm here moves our rangefinder. 
Okay, so this is a bit dry at the moment. I want to force a bit of grease into that joint. Because that's been through the ultrasonic cleaner. This is only a, um, a riveted joint. So you can't take it apart. Once you've washed any grease and oil out of it, it's going to be a bit stiff if you don't put something back. So I'll wriggle that in from the top here. This is always awkward. It's such a Mickey Mouse business that it's a wonder anyone drew that design out on paper and expected it to actually work getting that arm down through that slot and round the corner. You've got to wriggle it into place, it's like getting your foot into a gumboot or something. Get those two screws in place, and at the top we've got one screw here. This is the, the one that couples to our rangefinder. It's a shoulder screw and it's guided, guides that arm in the track. And it's as dark as here at the moment, I can't see what I'm doing. That's better. I'll nip that up and put a little spot of synthetic grease behind that screw and ahead of it. And as I move the focus scale ring, you'll see that screw roll backwards and forwards down that track. And as the front's collapsed, that'll actually run back inside the camera body, out of the way. Alright, I'll put that rubber band back where it came from so that the shutter release doesn't fall out and cause me trouble. The rest of the shaft here needs to go in place next. We'll start with this shaft. We want a little bit of a wipe of grease on the inside, a wipe of grease on the outside. Ah, come on back. Normally I just give the briefest wipe on the front face of that for good measure. We have this bush that goes in place, then this must go on and drop in and couple to the shaft. I'm just checking we're coupled. We are. The cover goes on. Chrome brass screws, easily damaged these ones. Put the pretty one here. If you've got an ugly one, put it down the bottom where it can't be seen. that one in place. The other one's tucked down here under that shutter release. If you think it's awkward to get out now, it's worse once the door and shutter's in place. Alright, so with those both in place, I can tighten those up. Now the front should open and close nicely. And I could just about put the front door on there. I'd better get this door on the camera, I suppose. Just run some synthetic grease in the slots, top and bottom there. Doesn't hurt to give the arms a wipe on the inside too. That one on the outside, you'll see that. And slide this into position. Swing the door around. Now we've got two washers and two hinge pin screws. These washers are much the same size. 
one's thicker I normally put the thicker one at the top not sure it makes an awful lot of difference so slide that in place it'll line up that hole in the door so I can get the screw in there of course that's better and run the screw in This is where it's important to have that rubber band in place because I've got to turn the camera upside down. And you do not want that shutter release shaft falling out. I'll slide the second washer in into position. Line up the hole. Get that screw in place. nice and positive no undue rattles that'll do nicely so that's our door and uh, move on to the film advance from there to deal with the film advance I've got to fit the lock lever and the release lever back in place now I can see a patch of corrosion on there now that touches nothing in the body so that would cause no problems at all and I'm just checking the release lever that appears clean. So I'll just rub that uh, bit of corrosion off that shaft there with a bit of scotch bright. Yeah, it's very superficial. It's just important that this moves freely in the camera body. There's a spring goes on the bottom of the release lever. It's this one. And it can be a bit awkward to get back in place. This one's a bit bent, which again is not a particularly uncommon. They can be bent. Yeah. Possibly they can even bend in service, but typically they get bent as things are taken apart. I'm just getting that so it sits flat, so it'll sit back over the boss here on that arm. Getting this seated over that boss is sometimes entertaining. It's not sitting down in there quite as flat as I would like. That's better. Okay, pop those to one side. Want some molybdenum paste. Want some in the top. There. And there, where the lock lever and the release lever come through, in the bottom, same deal. Where the release, the lock lever runs through, the release lever runs through, the guide pin for the lock lever runs in there. And on this front edge here, that's where that tail of that long spring runs against that edge. All right. Let's put the lock lever in place. Just checking that that drops in freely. Supporting that with a, a finger from underneath, I can put the spring and re return spring and its circlip in place. Of the two return springs that look much the same, it's the lighter spring that does this job. And if I support that with my finger from underneath and pull the spring down with my thumb, I can get that circlip into place on there. 
with the tail of my tweezers, just clip that into position. And I'll revolve that around so that the opening's at the front. It means it's less likely to foul the release button. Okay, so there's the lock lever moving and the spring returns it nicely. So the release lever drops down in here. Be careful not to catch that spring on the edge of the body otherwise you'll end up bending it just as it was bent before. To guide that up through the hole in the body at the top here and it's miles away from where it needs to be. That's there. Be aware of that spring at all times. Okay, so that's sitting, sitting in position now. I'll get its return spring on there. That was the heavier of the two return springs that look much the same. Get that screw started. The screw's often awkward to start. It's going into a split shaft. It doesn't always run in smoothly. It doesn't always run in without an argument. That looks fine. Now I'm just checking the depth of that. I've got my shutter release here right at the top of its stroke. I can see that the lever here wouldn't pass over the head of that screw so I need to screw that down more. It's a little bit more than that half a turn will probably do me. That'll do nicely. Just so there's some clearance between this arm and that screw head. When the screw, when the release is right at the top of its stroke and this is in the up position. Okay, so that levers, those both of those levers are in place. And I need the advanced shaft in next. Okay, I want to lubricate this film advanced shaft here. I'm using some graphite grease here. I need to get it down between the bush and the shaft. This stuff's nice and tacky so it uh, stays where it's put. I'll put some in the spring so that the coils of the spring will revolve over each other smoothly. And that's that. I'll put some synthetic grease on the ratchet teeth here. Top and bottom. And just line this up so that the holes run through. Take the film spool. Put the metal bush in the base of the film spool. It goes in the round hole. Open the back of the camera. Put the film spool in place. Tip the camera back over. Put the film advanced lever, shaft rather, in place. There's a bit of wiggling it should fall in. If it doesn't it probably means that the spring on the shaft is not sitting in its groove. Yeah, this spring here was sitting up and jamming things up. Sometimes you've got to fiddle with that to get it to seat, seat otherwise this won't drop down into the take-up spool. It's still not going to go. Let me get that spring alright. See if I can poke and prod that into position. Yeah, 
it's it. That just dropped into place. Which is just as well. Line up those three screw holes, which are now where. Up there. There. And fit the three screws. And these three screws are the ones in better condition from the base of the camera. There were three screws held this plate in place. Well, they were a bit more mutilated because they had to be fought out past the glue and the corrosion. These ones are the same size, but they were not quite so badly mutilated because they didn't need to be fought with quite so much. So I'll get these three screws tightened up. That's the film advance shaft back in. Now while I've got that graphite grease here, I'll do the clutch that needs to be done with graphite grease too. So I'll run some around the inside of the, uh, the barrel. Put the spring in place. The tab on the spring has to drop into that notch. This video camera is playing up and let's see if we can get a better focus than that. You get that tab into the notch like that. And I'll use a pair of crimp lug pliers, lower that on from the top, squeeze it gently, revolve this clockwise, that pulls that spring into place, pop the barrel over the top, slide it down, and there you go. Robert is your mother's brother. Okay, so a bit of synthetic grease through the centre. And that can drop in on the top here. Just revolve it until it drops in over the notches and the film to the uh, take up spool. And that is ready for fitting the uh, bush on the top. Which we want this next. And it's bits and pieces. And that little ratchet pull, which is now hiding somewhere else. Here it is. Let's get these in place. First, I want to force a bit of grease into this. These pinions here, so I just squeeze a bit of grease there, and that'll just force that in. Wipe around the centre. It's just using the synthetic grease. That should fit down over the top. Now if I revolve that take up spool with my thumb, that'll make the wheel here engage with the drum and that'll fall down into position. Oh, two screws. The shoulder screw at the back. At the front we have a standoff, plain side up. A little ratchet pull. And a screw that has a spring around the top edge which is currently not fitted. I'll put a touch of grease around that. So the pawl will move easily. Get that screwed down. Make sure that the pawl is free to move. That's all looking good. Tighten that. Tighten that. Might, might be in and make alterations to that yet, but that's close enough for the moment. 
And here's the return spring for that pole. Push this into position, it acts to push the pole towards the centre. Like that. It doesn't need to be a, a strong action, it's um, not going to back, back away from there. Okay, so here's this little gear. Let's put this in place. It's putting some synthetic grease through the centre there and underneath the outside edge particularly. We put this on the top here. If I revolve that counterclockwise it should push that pull back out of the way and drop into position. Just like that. This spring, I normally give that a light wipe with synthetic grease, protect it from corrosion if nothing else, it doesn't really need any lubrication at all. That can go on there, this piece goes on the top, then this drive dog here. And I'm just going to put this underneath the film advance shaft so it doesn't push down as I'm trying to get the screw in the top here. This washer goes on there. The gear goes on the top of the film advance shaft. And there we have the screw, and that will need the screwdriver.